Okay, hello everyone. This is where we get to really test the effectiveness of the Stona release, which we will be using on this um, silicon uh, mold that I made. And here's a sample of it. It's very flexible. Usually you use it with a stiff uh, um, form. I guess the mold is the the form and then this is I forget the original whatever stiff original but um, but because I'm trying to make a stamping uh, plate uh, that I can use with uh, paint fabric paint or any kind of paint I'm trying to make it in a flexible material so I was advised that the stone release would be the one the thing to try to use so I am working on that. Uh, I've sprayed it several times. The way the stoner release reads, it's stoner E302 rocket release is an extremely versatile release agent generally acceptable for applications where food grade release is required. I bought the food grade version because I intend to do this with um, the stamping thing with uh, food grade silicone also. Uh, rocket release is considered to be the most paintable release agent available when molding plastics and similar materials. Allows molded parts to be painted, plated, hot stamped, adhesive bonded, blah 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 blah. Okay, so mostly I just want it for the, um, the release capability. This was done using the um, the mold star fast. I forget the number. I think it was sixteen. So this is mold star fifteen slow from uh, Smooth On, and I get it at Reynolds Advanced Materials, and um, that has a six minute pot life. In retrospect, I should have saved that for the. Um, the internal one uh, where I'm getting silicon from silicon because I figure it'll have less chance of sticking than this one which will need to be um, it has a four hour drying time whereas this one dries in six minute pot life and dries in I want to say uh, 30 minutes, right? So, but I forgot, and we're out of this one now. So now we're moving on to my next purchase that I made the same day because I wanted to test the slower and the fast pot life altogether. So, there are a couple of key things to know with this stir well before using on both components. Stir well before using. Uh, the reason is that um, the mix will not uh, could potentially not dry if you're not if it's not all well stirred. So uh, I have just one of these stirring um, blades. I guess it could be used for a lot of things, and maybe this one. Yeah, I guess this is the, the right size for this. Um, so I will use these chopsticks that I have for my second stir and that it seems like it'll be okay hopefully nothing will break as I'm stirring it and what else do I need to share with you um, right the amount so I measured the, am the amount to make this and it was done um, using this mold I'm gonna make a second mold because this one has a blemish on the cheek and also the eye had a bit of um, an indentation so I'm going to try to um, make one that doesn't have quite the same indentation um, same flaws and why would I need it because well you know obviously I want um, I want a stamp that doesn't have as much as many flaws 
and why would I want to do this one even though I'm doing this one? Well, this is, um, I think it'll still be okay, and this will help me to understand if the release will work the way I expect it to or the way I want it to. So we have, there's a method, or there's a reason for everything. All right, so right now I'm going to open these up and do some stirring. I think that may be a little bit boring for you, so we probably won't show the entire stirring process. I'll cut out, even though this is experiential, I don't think you want to see all two hour video uh, as I do it. Now they always say have, you know, work in a room, right, a decent sized room. I've been working outdoors with because of the fact that, you know, I wanted to make sure any gases or anything like that, you know, wasn't going to be building up inside the room. But the last time I worked on this, I realized that it really didn't stink up the place, so I'm inside now. And anyway, it's cold outside right now. Cold being about uh, high 60s for us. I realized that for some some people, it may not be high 60s. I mean, high 60s is possibly even warm t-shirt weather, but we bundle up when that's the case, because we're Californians. All right, so here we go. Here are our two parts, part A and part B. And the way that all of these um, Smooth On products work is one-to-one -one ratio. It's kind of good that way so that you don't have to worry about anything. I bought a mixing cup. These cost about 50 cents over at Reynolds. And that way, um, but actually I don't need to use it, right? Because I know from the last time I did this, um, I made about, I want to say 2.9 times 2, 5.8 um, ounces for this one. And it, it got all the way to the top and maybe even overflowed a little. And then on this one, um, I'll use about half that much. So it's 5.8 plus 2.9. Oh, help me here. 7.8, 8.7 ounces, which is, uh, call it 8.6, I think that should be good which is about um, 4.3 ounces of each, right? So that's what we're going to do. Hopefully my arithmetic is right. So now I'm going to work on stirring and I'm going to turn off the, um, the pot while I do that, the camera. So just a little bit of uh, feedback on what's going on. There's a little bit of goop at the bottom, so that's what I'm going to try to mix up as much as I can so that it doesn't end up being left over when I am done with all of this uh, because I figure I won't use all of it and I don't want to have um, a bunch of hard stuff all at the end if I can help it. Okay, turning it off. Okay, so we have 8.6 and we're going to mix it up using this. Now I'm going to try to get rid of all the white. I like having this clear cup, clear bowl, because then I can see if there's any white left at the bottom. Ooh. 
cardboard and not necessarily need the foil. But that will be later. So right now, I'm going to move this over to here. So we have a smaller frame. Okay, all right, one that fits a little bit better. It'll use less of the of the stuff. So now we move the camera over to here. So you can see it as I pour it. Okay, so here we go. Now we're trying to make it so that there are no bubbles. And the question is how? So what they said is use a slow, steady stream. But I'm going to pour directly over those eyes. I don't know if that's right for me to do that. But I don't recall if I've sprayed this a second time. But with this donor release. So you can see that the way this is, I'm going to have to have good coverage, right? A little bit of extra weight on the top so that it can get into all of those crevices. You can see the bubbles forming in some spots. Okay. Wow. I do not have a lot left over. So I'm gonna... Wow. I'm hoping this is not gonna cause a problem here. So now I'm going to the next area. You can see... Uh, I think I may not have mixed enough. Dang it! Well, I guess as it dries, I'll be able to add some more. Hmm. I'm almost out. Well, if that works, then that's good enough. It doesn't have to be, I guess, exactly the square, the rectangular shape. I'm just going to leave that then. I should have done this one first. So last time it seemed to help to use the blow dryer on the bubbles, so I'm going to do that again. I'm hoping to force the silicone into the crevices. So see 
see you can see that bubble yeah the bubbles are coming out now doing something something good so i think having this lower part light is good gives you more time to do this before it starts setting Thank you. 